Sean. Oh. Little gentleman. Are you there? Welcome to a very wet Brewster Park here this evening for this Westville Hotel Division 1 final league game between Inniskillen Gales and Etherney. A um, few different permutations at play here this evening. We'll be going for live updates to the various different venues and Kieran Maguire and, and Park McGordon will be giving us updates on that. I'm fortunate here this evening to be joined by the man on my left, Niall Smith, uh, who's going to give some expert analysis. Niall, I'll hand it over to yourself. Thoughts? Yeah, I suppose in terms of this particular game, um, it's a tough one to call. Um, I suppose the Gales uh, are strengthened because of the fact that they've a, a few of their uh, players back who are away for the summer. Um, and I suppose those guys will be looking for a bit of game time too, um, which would be important in terms of preparation for championship. Edirne, on the other hand, I suppose a lot of the league, they've been uh, trying to blood some of the younger players. Uh, they've been trying to build their team up and I suppose they're, they're fortunate enough now to be in a uh, in with a chance of making the, the final, uh, depending on how things go tonight. And I suppose the experience that those young lads that they have uh, will certainly... Uh, you know, it'll, it'll be good for them going forward. Um, and I suppose what's what they're blending now is experience that they've already had. Um, so it leaves it that it's actually well set up for tonight in terms of the mix. And I suppose the two teams that are playing both play with a bit of pace, uh, particularly up front. Um, and with the conditions that are there, Hannon is going to be very, very difficult. It's going to be very hard to, it's going to be very testing for all of the players. But uh, but I say, particularly with both teams that play at pace, um, it's just going to be interesting to see who copes with it uh, best. Yes, indeed. The the surface here looks uh, splendid in front of us. It, uh, great carpet, like um, just on on the league itself and the new format this year and the importance of it. And I think back to uh, to last year's league and you know the importance of gaining momentum going into championship. Uh, there was a, a game here last year between Ern Gales and Inniskillen Gales, which was the final game to see who'd uh, who'd go into the league final. With Canali, I think it was at, at that stage. But when you think of it, those three teams were last four pairings in yeah. in in the league. So it, it's it's vital for these teams to to gain that bit of momentum moving forward in the championship. There's no doubt about it. I mean, when you talk about those two teams, that actually ended up being the championship final uh, later in the year. So it just uh, proves that. 
league, particularly the latter stages of the league. And, and one thing about the league, the way it's set up at the minute, with the fact that you've only nine games, it means there's very little room for error. If you lose two matches, you're 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 going to find it difficult to make the final. Um, I suppose the Derry Only Harps have been, um, I suppose, managed to win all of their games, uh, which has uh, taken them out of the, the this charge towards the final, and that they're they're in the final, so they're lucky enough to be above that. But for the other teams, it's just going to leave it very competitive. And when you look at it. In terms of tonight's games, obviously both uh, the Gales and Edirne are just going to be going for it because of nothing to lose. Um, in terms of uh, Canali, um, as well as they have to go for it as well against uh, Balnalek, uh, which will leave that game very competitive. And obviously it's a derby game too, so which will be interesting. Both teams will will just go for it. Um, and then in terms of um, as well as Edirne, Edirne just have to go for it as well here tonight because of the fact that. If, if they lose, they're out. Um, if they win, there's a strong chance they'll make the final, depending on what happens in Balnaleg. Yeah, and, and, and I suppose, as I said earlier, the fact of this seeding system and and where you're going to be seeded in your group for championship and all of that, that type, type of stuff, stuff and, and I, I suppose, suppose any team moving forward in the championship wants to go straight into a semi-final and, and not play in a preliminary quarter-final. Just, Just looking at them here after taking to the, the field here on my, on my right-hand side, um, Players to watch out for on, on both sides? Yeah, I suppose with regard to um, Edirne to begin with, just as we see them out here, as well as you're still looking towards uh, the, the county players, particularly um, uh, the McCuskers, I suppose everybody sort of thinks the McCuskers when we think of Edirne. Um, I suppose Sean Cassidy is, is one that uh, I suppose he's starting to come into a bit of form. Um, I really, I suppose, didn't have much football at the start of the year because of injuries and whatnot. Hopefully has, has cleared that up. It'll just be interesting to see if young Louis Donnelly, how he gets on at midfield. Um, you know, he's a, a good, good, strong fella, big up and coming player for Edirne. He's going to be very important. And uh, then you're also, uh, I suppose, the likes of Conor McGee, who will Edirne always sort of look towards. Very sort of, uh, very consistent player, very fit, covers a lot of ground. So, but it's just going to be interesting to see how the younger players go tonight. I mean, many of them actually will will, will start tonight, and uh, obviously many of them will will sort of stand up because there's going to be no uh, no prisoners here tonight. In terms of the gales, I suppose is the going to be. Um, I suppose the likes of Brandon. I see him there uh, tonight. It'll be interesting to see if he gets some game time. Will he start? I suppose the big question. In terms of anybody else, James O'Donnell, I watched him last week against the Harps. He actually had a decent first half. Uh, and particularly the first half, actually, Gales, uh, I suppose, had a lot of possession. Uh, they would feel that they missed a lot of chances last week. Um, but a few of the players was unlucky to get a black card and um, had, has had a good season so far as was Connor Love you're always looking towards Connor uh, for those key scores um, and I suppose the one thing about the Gales is suppose some of the players last week for example were slightly out of possession and uh, I suppose the closer they get to the championship and the more they're at full strength the more they'll be able to I suppose put their players into their their, their best position uh, for example John Rehill was at 11 when uh, I suppose people would feel maybe John's best position is in the inside forward It'll be interesting to see uh, what way they line out tonight. Uh, as at this stage, we obviously haven't got the teams, but uh, we'll, we'll, I suppose, give you a full picture on that once we do get them. Yes, I see referee Gerard Gallagher down here below us on the line and just surveying. And we're about five minutes from throw in here. And one thing I suppose is, as I, as I look here and I, I look at the, the squads, um, Edney seem to have. You know, whatever, 22, 23. But <laughs> look over here to my left. There's probably over 30 men togged out there for the Gales now. Yeah, and I think the Gales are sort of promoting that in terms of strength and depth. Um, and they've certainly been using their, their junior games for that and, and the club competition and probably the earlier part of the league as well. Um, I know from talking to a few of the county lads they saying when they played the Gales earlier in the year, there was a lot of the younger lads that they didn't know who they were and were pretty impressed with their style and with their, their level of, of fitness and, um, and their skill level in particular. So I suppose from the Gales, they're, they're building a squad here as well as they're looking towards the future as well um, with a strong foundation as well between I suppose the championship this year and maybe looking further afield to, towards next year in the coming years I suppose the one thing about I suppose Ennis Gillen they, they always have the luxury of having numbers um, and that's something I suppose is how you use those numbers um, so I suppose uh, that's that's a key thing for them and I think so far certainly they've impressed me in terms of uh, how they're going about it 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they, did, they took the championship by storm last year. There's no doubt about it. I, I suppose, you know, the semi final, the Harps may have feel that on that particular day, they possibly, you know, may have left a few scores behind them. I was doing commentary on that game, but it definitely it was it, it felt like one of those games for a, especially you know a team with younger players that it was so important for them to get over the line in that game and I mean we had whatever the game wasn't played the first day the championship final and then the second day against Aaron Gales you know you can say whatever maybe but Aaron Gales not turning up but they really come out of the blocks that day and that type of stuff you spoke about that speed that power their support play um, you know, they're definitely, and then, you know, I suppose when they went into Ulster, they backed that up. Um, so, definitely, you know, I'd agree with you there. They're they're looking to build here, they're looking to build for the future. Uh, they're neat. Um, you know, looking at the results at the start of the year, I suppose they didn't have the best of starts, but they seem to have come with a late burst of, of, of results to put themselves in this position. and. It's, I, I would say, you know, from their perspective and from Chris Kelly's perspective, the, the opportunity to be, you know, to be there or to get into a league final is, is you know, massive at this stage. Well, a lot of those at any guys, you know, when it comes down to it, they've had the experience of league finals, championship finals, having won a championship. And I suppose when it comes down to it, they're... Um, you know, they have that experience and then that's blending with youth, you can see it at the minute and I suppose as, as the league has gone on, they've got uh, they've got stronger and stronger as the league has gone on because a lot of their key players are coming back in, they're gaining fitness and, and they're all uh, raring to go and I suppose again it's with the championship in mind that they're set up that way. Well, we've we've just been handed um, the Etherney team sheet here and um, no surprise, the man in goals is, is Chris Snow. It's, it's kind of all over. Two is Manus Maguire. Three is Michael Maguire. Four is Owen Donnelly. Uh, we're looking for... Yeah, I suppose... Num just, uh, numbers are all over the place on yeah. this. So we'll just kind of... Six is Paul Maguire. Seven, Enda Cassidy. Eight, Declan McCusker. Um, nine then is Louis Donnelly. Nine is Louis Donnelly, and I'd imagine that's the way that it'll be. Uh, ten is. Is Niall Maguire. Niall Maguire. Now, there's a few interesting ones thrown in there, I suppose, just to see Paul McCusker's lining out at, yeah, uh, sorry, uh, at full forward. But as well as that, Ryan, Ryan Morris is back in, at, in the corner by the looks of it. And you've Conor McGee at, at 11. Yeah. Um, and then Sean Kesty, obviously, lined out at 13. Yeah, it, it, it. We'll just pause for a moment for a run of Ian. Well, a beautiful rendition there of a Ron Navian by Aoife Catcart. And we're getting ready here for the action. We see Etherney in their, in their huddle over here to the right-hand side. And the Gales are down here to the left-hand side. We're just awaiting some team news on the Gales. And as I... As I speak, the man has arrived, and uh, Niall, maybe... Yeah, again, we're starting now. Uh, Cian Newman actually is back in goals. Uh, he's replacing Ronan Beattie from last week. Um, Ronan actually had a, a decent game last week against the Harps, and I suppose it's, again it's given Cian uh, key time. Um, again, looking at the numbers, uh, Jack Tierney's at two. Um, in terms of three is Ryan McDonnell. Um, four is Cal McInesby. So a couple of changes there with uh, Ryan going to full back. Um, in terms of the half back line, Connell Quinn's at five, Josh Horns at six, seven is Ronan, Ronan Beatty. Then at eight is actually Brandon Horn, so Brandon starting, Ross Bogue at nine, so uh, again good to see Ross in there. Ten is Neil McDermott, eleven is Connor McAleer, so again Connor on uh, to get a bit of game time there. Connor McShay at twelve, 
13 is uh, Connor Love, um, 14 then is John Rehill, and then uh, which is John's uh, I suppose favourite position probably, and then 15 is Noel McIntyre, who would expect to go back as the plus one. Yeah, it's a, f a fairly strong, fairly strong team there. It is, yeah, and again, a few boys that they're that they're trying to, to I suppose, trying to uh, blood as well to some extent in terms of this level. But uh, the one thing for sure, the strength and depth, and if again, the one thing I would say is that uh, they have a very strong bench. They have quite a few there that they can call on at any time, uh, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah, we're we're ready here to go in Brewster Park, a very wet Brewster Park. Conditions will be slippy. There's no doubt about that. Jared Goller getting ready to throw the ball in here. At uh, midfield for the Gales, we have Brandon Horn looking to make a run. Ross Bogue, Louis Donnelly, and Decky McCusker. Decky stays down, but Brandon Horn, Brandon gathers the ball and he gives it over to Ross Bogue. Little fist pass, and he gives it over to Neil McDermott. Neil McDermott with the ball in his back with Brandon here. So, so again, uh, the Gales are pushing forward. As Brandon well. gives it across to Cal McInespy. Cal, toe to hand, looks back inside and gives it to Brandon. He has um, Jack Tierney inside him and Jack gives it to number seven there. That's Ronan Beatty. Ronan Beatty, just getting up to speed with the numbers here. So Ronan Beatty on the ball again and he gives it back. Comes out here to Brandon and Brandon gives it across to Ryan McDonnell and Ryan with number three on his back but no problem to him to go forward and he gives the ball in t inside that time to Conor McShea but it's bounced out and it's gone for another knee. Throw. Yeah, again, a good interception there by Sean, young Sean McCarn. Actually, yeah. shown his, uh, his physicality for a young lad. Yeah. I suppose he, Mark and Connor now, it'll be a, a good test for Decky, him tonight. Decky plays a long ball and plays it inside and has played into Sean Cassidy there. And Sean with the ball and he gives it out there to Niall Maguire and Niall gives it across. That's Sean McCarn again, is it over there on the yeah, far side? And, and Louis Donnelly. Louis now. moving forward and Louis gives it inside. Send Cassidy. Ender Cassidy and Ender takes a shot and good score. Good interplay there by Etherney, their first attack and a, a score from wing half back into Cassidy. Yeah, and they moved the ball fairly quickly there. Sean Cassidy involved in the play, but they had options as well, which was a, a positive and obviously went wide with the ball in terms of the. Newman slips, but. And Conor McGee gathers the ball, takes his mark and takes it quickly. And I think that's Shea Deasley is it, with the ball there on the, on the far side, yes. And Shea gives it back out and it's Paul McCusker and he tries to play Shea back in. Shea with number 15 on his back. And he gives it over there to Sean Cassidy and Sean toe to hand moves back inside and he gives it out. Yeah, again, the gills of everybody back, uh, bar one player, I think. Uh, so I suppose they're putting everybody into defence. Uh, as you can see, Chris Snow is well Chris, up the pitch. Chris well up and very much a feature of the modern game. And no problem to Chris to play outfield. Paul McCusker and Paul plays a little pass inside. And Conor McGee has looped in there. And I'm surprised he didn't take the mark. And he goes for the shot. And that one... Well, yeah. Kane Newman has it. It falls short and... Might have been better advised taking the mark inside there. I think maybe Connor didn't realise that uh, Paul was actually outside yeah. the 45 when he kicked yeah. it. So Connor McShea with the ball comes up the field now. He looks over to this side and he's got Ross Bogue and Ross looks inside. Brandon's there, but he plays the ball back and. Yeah, again, this is the the, pl the, the, the plus one um, yeah. in Noel McIntyre. Um, oh no! This yes. is first first year with the Gills. Cal McInespy, an exciting young player, and he plays it to Josh Horn, and Josh is bottled up, and Josh is tackled, and Etherney turn over the ball, and Paul McCusker moves forward, Cal McInespy holds him up, and he plays it out there to Niall Maguire, he's played back inside. We don't seem to have the numbers. <laughs> I know, it's a bit of a guess Louis, game here at times. Louis, Louis Donnelly and Louis plays it to Connor McGee and Connor plays it across Decky McCusker, number eight on his back and Decky gives it in to Sean McCarn and Sean, number five on his back, out to Connor McGee. 
Connor faced by a wall of Gales men and Chris Snow again makes himself available and crosses into the Gales half and Chris looks out to his his right hand side and he's got a man out there number 10 and that is a super score I think it was Niall Maguire there it was from, yeah, yeah Niall Maguire score. outside of the right boot from the right wing and yeah Etherney have started the better in this game yeah I think, uh, I think possibly with a few changes that the Gills made in, in their defence maybe just taking a wee bit of time to settle into it um, I suppose that's, it does take time when you you move your players around like, uh, Etherney are playing with a bit of fluency here and uh, not wasting possession there's been no turnovers from them as yet Cain Newman and Cain goes long and oh it's a foul there and foul by the Gales number 10 Neil McDermott and somebody down on the ground here for Etherney I can't just see who it is and a bit of scuffling going on but Jared Goller goes over to have a word and he goes over to have a word there with Neil McDermott yeah, one thing about Neil now, he's not afraid to, to make his mark, that's for sure, uh, from a physicality point of view. Um, so obviously he's letting uh, the Edney boys know that he's on the pitch. A small bit of afters going on over here between himself and Enda Cassidy. And it's actually Niall, Niall, Maguire, Niall Maguire, the man who scored the last score, but yeah. it gives an opportunity. The ball has been moved on and Chris Snow from the 45 and a right-footed kicker we'd be... Well, we'd say he'd have a better than even money shot. So, Chris No steps back. Five minutes, just over five minutes played here, and he slips, but it's gone. Oh, it's stopped in there by Kean Newman. And yeah, Kean reacted well there. It was like yeah, it could raise it slipped very, over the line. Yeah, could have slipped over the line, and out come in a skill and gales with the ball. And it's Neil uh, McDermott with the ball and he plays it back there to Connor Con McAleer. Connor McAleer and the ball has gone loose and Owen Donnelly has gathered the ball and he gives it out to Michael Maguire and Michael gives it out to Sean McCarn and Sean towed a hand and looks to see who's available and over on that far side was Decky McCusker and now Louis Donnelly and Louis gives it into his centre half back there, Paul Maguire. Paul gives it back to Louis, and Louis has Chris Snow available. And Chris very much coming into this game as a plus one, and yeah, and really, really linking well. You know, there's still two men inside, but he's out there. He's always available. And Michael Maguire gives it across here to Owen Donnelly. Yeah. Owen towed a hand up the field, number four on his back. He's got Paul McCusker with him. He's got his brother with him, and he gives it to his brother, and it's given inside to. Paul McCusker and Paul rather snatches at that one and pulls it and drifts harmlessly out to the left and wide. The one thing you see with the play here, the Gales are putting very few tackles in. Um, they're allowing Edney to build uh, and to create those opportunities with very without a hand being laid on the Edney player. Yeah, I you know I suppose I take your point about the changes in the back line and you know getting that cohesion going. Here's Ryan McDonald coming up the far wing, toe to hand, and he gives it inside there. And, gets it back and gives it on ahead looking for Cal McInespy but Decky McCusker cuts it out and Decky number 8 on his back and he gives a fist pass out and I think it's Niall Maguire over on that far side and it's given to Paul Paul McCusker and Paul moves forward and Heatherney look to pour forward here and back with Sean Cassidy and Sean number 13 on his back Sean has Louis Donnelly inside and Louis toe to hand and fist pass out here Again, it's pretty obvious. Cassidy and ended toe to hand and moves inside and Ender who got the first score of the game gives it back to Decky McCusker and Decky gives it back to Chris Snow and Chris just on the halfway line he has a man free over on the far side I think it's uh, Owen Donnelly yeah it's Owen number four on his back so Owen gives it inside and he gives it to Decky McCusker and Decky looks up and he gives a little dink ball inside towards Connor McGee but it's well caught out and it's bobbing around there and it was a good interception by Ross Bogue and that man's back mopping up Noel McIntyre and Brandon gives it to Noel McIntyre Jack Tierney Jack gives it to Josh Horn and comes out here and Ross Bogue has it and he gives it back inside and Noel McIntyre towed a hand up that far side 
gives it to Connor McShea and Connor gives a little fist pass inside there to Connell Quinn. Goes back with Connor McShea and Connor looks inside for John Rehill and John turns around and there's that man Curley and unfortunately for him this time it drifts drifts out to the right and wide and first real attack of purpose and I suppose the first threat on goal for the Gales bit but disappointing for them nine minutes gone yeah but there's a oh, bit short kick out there and early turned over but Owen Dottenley managed to recover and Michael Maguire came out with it and give it to Decky McCusker and Decky looks over this side and he's got Sean McCarn and Sean toe to hand number five on his back and looks back inside he's Owen Donnelly and Owen sees that he has Chris Snow available and yeah the Gales putting a bit of a press on here now and uh, Chris has to play it across his own goals there and there's a scampering across the goals by Manus Maguire and well Manus a judge yeah I think Manus was probably expecting to be tackled there yeah. and that's why uh, Connor was putting a bit of uh, Connor Love was putting a bit of pressure on him yeah. in this case uh, the Gales pushed three up for that yeah. uh, and you can see the pressure that it uh, it it, it made and it made a difference. And evening like that, you get a bit of a press on, a bit of a high press on. Chance is always there. You're going to turn one over, and I. Yeah, that's it. And I mean, an even yeah, particularly an even like this. And uh, so Zerini's trying to play it out short every time. So John Rehill steps up with this one, takes it out of the hands, and coolly slots it between the posts. And with ten and a half minutes gone here in a very very wet Brewster Park, in this intriguing opening quarter. Etherney lead by two points to one. Yeah, so again, I suppose the Gales haven't really got off to a blister start just yet, but that'll settle them down. Chris Snow finds Sean McCarn and he gives it back to Owen Donnelly and gives it back to Chris Snow, and the Gales really starting to press up now in this Etherney kick out. They smell blood with that short one nearly turned over, but Etherney managed to get it out, and Decky McCusker and Decky comes out with the ball, and Decky manages a, a bit of a dummy there, and, and Finds himself in open space and looks and gives a diagonal dangerous looking ball in and Shea Deasley has come on to it. 15 on his back and Shea gives a little pop pass over there to Niall Maguire and Niall gives it out to Sean McCarran and Sean gives it back inside to Sean Cassidy. Sean Cassidy to Louis Donnelly and Louis. Little pop over the top there and it's given back into Connor McGee and Connor goes with the right foot and that one drifts out to the left and wide but dangerous looking move that time from Edney. Yeah it was and I mean Decky uh, made a great <coughs> move there taking two of the Gales lads out of it uh, which created the space but one thing that they had to was support uh, a few of the boys uh, Shade Easley uh, moving forward at pace then you Sean McCarran coming up and that's two of the younger lads uh, showing their pace. Okay, ball comes out and it's judged to be a foul. I'm just looking at some scores here. Irvinstown 1-1, one, one, Aaron Gales 3 points, Benelec 3, Canali 1-3 and if things stay the same as that there, it'll be irrelevant what happens here but I suppose there's a long way to go in all of these games. So the ball comes out here and it ends up. I think judge, uh, she judge. could be in, in a wee bit of ball here. I think just hopefully... I didn't see exactly what happened, but uh, there was a reaction from was the line anyway. Yeah, yeah. Again, just talking about uh, the game as a whole, I suppose Gills uh, I suppose have been more methodical in terms of the build-up. The one thing about Erdene, they're going at pace and they're looking to play it in early if they can. I think we're going to go to Kieran now for some live updates on what's going on elsewhere around the league here in Fermanagh this evening. So over to Kieran. Yeah, it's a, busy, it's a busy evening, Morris, given the bad weather and all that there. But going through the scores as we have them, in Division 1, it's Belcou are leading Derry Gondney, one point to no score. Here, it's obviously two points to Anthony, one point to Anna Skillen in Division 1 as well. Dona are leading, St. Patrick's, St. Pat's Dona are leading Daryl in two goals to one point. As well as that, Irvingstown lead Aaron Gales Bleak, 1-1 one, one to three points. And in the other game that uh, matters for uh, the Division 1 final, it's currently Canale 1-4, Benelec three points. As it stands, it's Canale that would be joining Derry Gonley in that Division 1 final. Flying through the scores in Division 2, we have Timor lead Maguire's Bridge, one goal to no score. Devlish lead Newtown Butler, four points to three. And Listen Ski are also leading Tampo, four points to three as well. 
OK, Kieran, thanks for that update on what's happening around Fermanagh in both divisions this evening. Back here at Brewster, um, no scores to report since we took the break for Kieran. That was Ray McDonnell and that one looks to have, well, Louis Donnelly elected to keep it in. It looked to be going out over the line and Louis manages to evade those tackles and he, he's given it to Niall Maguire and Niall gives it out on the far side and that looks like Paul McCusker there, number 14, is back and Josh Horn comes up to him and it's chip ball clipped inside and it's Sean Cassidy and Sean gets onto that left foot and when Sean gets onto that left foot, there's usually only one result. Heatherney yeah. lead by three points to one as we approach 15 minutes played here in Brewster Park. A great point by Sean, and I mean, he took it on himself. He had two defenders in front of him, but uh, he just decided to go for it. Absolutely, and uh, Chris Kelly would be happy. It, what a, is there a bit of a breeze blowing down the field? I'm just looking at the, the kick out holding up there, and there's a great mark by Connor McGee. And Connor plays it over, and Shade Easley is over on that far side, and he gives one in towards Sean Cassidy. And Sean now starting to really come into this game, and he looked, and yes, right decision he just took. A turn too much out of it there, but uh, Sean Cassidy looking dangerous. He is, he is, yeah. One thing in terms of the Gales, this is. Oh, Cain uh, managed to cope with that one. In terms of the Gales, uh, any time they've gone long, they've lost the ball. Uh, mm. In terms of the kickouts, uh, they've lost the break or lost the, the clean catch. Uh, the Gales haven't bothered getting out there. Uh, they only had a, a bit of a press of their own on between Ronan Beatty and Cian Newman. And there was a bit of a mix-up there. And Brandon gives a long cross-field ball. And Cal McInespy and Cal, stylish cornerback, comes up toe to hand and drops the shoulder, looks to move inside. And he gives it inside there. It was given to Conor McAleer that time. It's ended up with Brandon Horn. And Brandon gives it back there That's to Ronan, Ronan Beatty. There. And Ronan gives a cross field ball there over to that man nope. who has fallen back all the time, That's Noel McIntyre. Yeah. So Noel gives it to Cal McInespy. And Cal gives a long ball back out to Jack Tierney here. And Jack looks over and he's got Ronan Beatty. No, we have it. It's Con Conal Quinn. Conal Quinn, sorry. And Conal plays it inside, but Etherney turned that ball over again. And defensively, although the conditions are very slippy in there in the corner, and Ryan Maguire, although out with the ball, comes Louis Donnelly. And Louis having a big impact on this game in the first 15 minutes, getting on a lot of ball, and Niall Maguire, and Niall looks, and he looks long, and Paul McCusker has drifted back, and he has loads of space if he can gather this one on the run, and indeed he does, and he enters into the Gales half with purpose. He looks inside, he gives a dink ball in, Sean Cassidy, and Sean gives it to, I think it was Michael Maguire there, and an excellent point. Yeah, the one thing about that move was Paul the pace. Maguire, actually. Yeah. The pace that they moved the, the ball pace, at. Yeah. And again, what happened was the Gales had pushed up, trying to uh, force the turnover. Um, the Entity managed to get the ball over the top and le actually left the Gales exposed up uh, in defence because there's so many had pushed up. F feature of football now, you know, a lot of teams going for the high press, but if you are caught out and a team get out over the top, I mean, not just alone is the danger of, of a point, there's a danger of a goal, you know, with the way the teams can break at pace. That's, so that's Niall Maguire gives one in and Sean Casty really getting on top and starting to get every ball and he's looking to get in that left foot but this time he's turned and it ends up back out with Decky, Decky McCusker and Decky looks to float this one in and he floats this one in nicely and over the bar and Heatherney lead by five points to one with 18 minutes played here in, a, in Brewster Park so Etherney getting a bit of a foothold now in the game they are and again it's because of some super scores there when you look at those last yeah. three between uh, uh, Sean Cassidy Declan and also uh, um, uh, uh, Connor uh, or Niall Maguire actually Connor, uh, the scores were excellent but there's a good hunger about Etherney yeah. tonight there is the, oh and it's well Ryan Maguire I think it was there that won that one yeah So Conor McGee gives it across field and Sandy Cassidy there. And Cassidy back to Conor McGee and he has co and Conor looks to get on the but this one drifts harmlessly in and kind of comes off his boot and 
But Etherney have a lot of men up there and they're looking to get a press on here. And Cain, you, oh, Cain just gets that one out. And Cal McInespy and Cal toe to hand comes up underneath the stand here. And conditions very, very greasy here in Brewster Park. And maybe not an evening for any of the fancy stuff. Jack Tierney gives it across to Connor McShea and he gives it back to Jack. Jack Tierney and Jack number two in his back and he gives it up to Connor Love and Connor looks inside and he looks for John Rehill and John gets out in front of Michael Maguire and he wins that one. John Rehill and John looks to gather it but he's surrounded by Etherney men and the Etherney men have turned him over again and Owen Donnelly gives it back to Sean McCarn and Sean f good fist pass out Decky Cassidy and Decky looks around him and he sees Connor McGee and Connor gives it out that far side to Enda Cassidy and Enda with seven on his back crosses into the Gales half and he's in no hurry and he looks up and gives a little lovely little ball into Paul Paul McCusker and Paul looks up and Paul goes for the post and Paul dissects the post and I would have to say that the quality of shooting that's on display here this evening from Metherney they've really yeah, kicked some fine points it's now. excellent but also the turnover that was created yeah. and uh, John had the ball there first time great ball in by Connor Love but unfortunately he didn't get enough support up and uh, I don't know were swarming around him uh, just as soon as he won the ball win the ball back move it quickly and lovely score so it's up here and Louis Louis Donnelly breaks that one down and it ends up with his brother Owen and he gives it to Connor McGee and Connor toe to hand and Connor looks up oh and he and Cal McInespy, I think it's in, or no, it's Ryan McDonnell is a judge to have fouled um, Sean Cassidy. Sean Cassidy, sorry, Sean, yeah. And yeah. I think Sean being pretty, pretty cute, cute there, picking yeah. a one-on-one -on -one situation. The one thing I just need to emphasise here is the fact that the Gills are losing all of their kickouts. They've only, I think, maybe won one short, and the rest, any time they've gone long, they've actually uh, lost the break. And again, I think that emphasises that uh, Adderney are going after the break. Uh, they're forcing the Gills to go long. It's suiting uh, Adderney because, obviously, they're winning possession. They're not allowing the Gills to play the quick ball. The Gills, as a stand, at the minute they're playing um, and initially it was John Rehill and Conor Love up front now they've allotted to go for Conor McShea up there as well along with uh, Conor McAleer yeah. so um, Adonis putting a high press on which isn't allowing the Gales to move the ball quickly which means it's, uh, it's they're not getting the supply into their, their full forward line so Etherney lead by seven points to one is a six point lead. Sorry, who scored that last three there and I? Um, I was too busy looking down the pitch, <laughs> but I presume it was Sean Cassidy. Sean, oh, we're going to see the replay here. <laughs> the wonders of no, that's showing back to another. So there's another one against there's the There's another, yeah, yeah, another, another, and you know, that's a valid point that from these kickouts, they're in trouble, and there's a long probing ball from Decky McCusker freeing up Connor McGee, and Connor with a bit of space, and he looked to get inside here, but he's surrounded by Gales men, and he's forced back out the field, Sean Cassidy with the ball, and Sean gives it back out there, and ends up with Louis Donnelly, and Louis gives it over to Enda Cassidy, and Enda goes an amazing little run inside Ryan Maguire and Ryan with the ball 12 on his back and manages to get a bit of space and is that one oh yeah he created a bit of space for himself created there. a bit of space and looking to get on the end of it over the far side there I think was Niall Maguire yeah there's good variation in the uh, at any forward play in that they're moving players in and out of the full forward line Conor McGee's there in one attack Sean Cassidy's there in one attack yeah. uh, Shea Daisley's there in one attack so they're moving them around um, and that uh, is, is, is was upsetting the, the Gales defence oh referee Jared Goller was playing advantage there because Cal McInespy got into a little bit of bother and looked like he might be turned over but Jared brought back as there was no advantage to the Gales and maybe a bit of common sense play there. Kean Newman with the ball here and he's looking for somebody and he gives it out and it's Ronan Beatty I think that yeah comes in and gets that one. And Connell Quinn on the ball and Connell gives a long one in towards John Rehill and John Rehill and Michael Maguire having a tussle and a battle over on the far wing but again it's the Etherney men that win out and he gives it to Owen Donnelly and Owen gives it out to Decky McCusker and Shea Deasley and Shea has the ball and out to Sean McCarn and Sean Louis Donnelly making a run from but he likes to go back inside and Decky Cassidy and Decky gives it outside to Connor McGee and Connor gives it over there on the far side and long looping ball in and it's a mark and great ball in there on the on on the 
from the far wing from Niall Maguire and into Sean Cassidy and Sean causing a lot of bother in there now. He is, yeah, and he, you can see as the game is gr uh, going forward, he's, he's unfortunately for Ryan, he seems to be getting the better of him at the minute. Um, I mean, Ryan will not give up, that's for sure. He'll keep up uh, the task. But uh, Sean, with his experience, he's, he's showing it there at the minute, and the runs that he's making is what's making those cre create those chances. So another score, and we're going to go for a video update from Park right, and, and as you can see, it's coming live there Wendy from... Wendy Dallinac from Dallinac with a um, current scoreboard rate, Dallinac 3 points, Canoli 1-3. So for Kieran McKenna with one two Good man, Kieran, thanks for that like point from Eamon Green, Kieran McBride, but so Park's gonna give us the uh, better team here early on and what's happening there here again. But I'll leave it back. Dan Leck not three, Canoli one three, and we can make that now one four. We're back here now. I assume we're back here live at Brewster Park and yeah, again, one, again went, went short there. Um, uh, Gales went short. Sean McCarran managed yeah. to get in and, and steal it, uh, but wasn't able to hold on to the possession. So forward comes Josh Horn and Josh Horn, and he has Conal Quinn with him, and he looks. He has Ross Bogue over on this far side, but he elects to go inside, and he goes long there. And it's Conor McAleer. Conor McAleer and ends up with Conor McShay, and Conor twists and he turns and is. A bit of darkness beginning to fall here in Brewster Park and ball popped inside there for Connor Love, the man they call Corley and he twists one way and he twists the other and he gives a fist pass inside to John Rehill and John, it's a handoff but and the Gales are forced back out here and it's it's yeah, and again, I don't have everybody behind the ball. Yeah. Uh, they're packing the defence and they're moving around. Uh, they're covering every angle. Cal McInespy and gives it inside to Connell Quinn and Noel McIntyre, who's sitting out here very deep. And it's given in to Connell Quinn, and it's back with Josh Horn, and it's given over to Jack Tierney, and Jack over on the far side. Jack gives it inside there, and it, it ends up back with Jack, a good one too, but he's surrounded by other men, and no free, and it, it looks, it's scrappy over there. It's very hard to see what's a what's actually happening but the ball ends up with John Rehill and John pops that one over the bar for a badly needed second point to the game for the Gales that's, we have the, that's the first time the Gales actually moved the ball quickly over yeah. the top Jack Tierney made a great run uh, then obviously lost it but the man is to win it back kick out, and kick out there looking for Ryan Maguire and he, actually no one in, in the Gales half of the field there and if one of those kick outs does get away onto somebody you would feel uh, there could be an opportunity for Etherney. Brandon Horn and Brandon comes up and he gives it inside this time to Ronan Beatty. And here we have Ross Bogue and Ross drops the shoulder and looks to go by Sean McCarran and Sean a judge to have to have fouled Ross and Ross gives it inside and he gives it to Josh Horn and jo it ends up over on the far side with Cal McInespy and Niall McDermott played the pass and Niall went for the run but it's cut out and it's well cut out in there. Yeah, it was a wee bit of an ambitious ball there. Yeah. Obviously, right idea, good run by Neil. Yeah. Um, but again, it was a bit ambitious in the pack defence. Oh. John could be a wee bit of bother there. A wee bit of bother maybe for yeah. John Real. A bit of a heavy tackle there on Decky McCusker, I think it is. It's down on the ground. And really, is it's getting challenging to see here. I assume the floodlights will come on it's shortly. It'll certainly be on for the second half at this rate. I mean, the way it's shaping up now, yeah. we, we've uh, 28 minutes gone, uh, just two to, two to go. An update from Belnalek. Uh, Belnalek starting to come back into that one. It's uh, Canoli lead by 1-5 to 1-4. A Kieran McBride goal has narrowed the, the gap there in Belnalek. So, you know, as we said previously, a lot can change in a short time. So Louis, Louis Donnelly and Louis, strong man Louis. So Louis judged to have been fouled there by Josh Horn. And yeah, I think he was fouled just at the yeah. start of that. Louis having, getting on a lot of ball. Having a he is, yeah, and he's playing a sensible game. Yeah. He's holding the middle. He's playing more or less between the two uh, 45s and he's, he's, he's playing a very sensible game. He's, he's been a link. He's playing particularly very much up through the middle um, and so he's an option. He's, he's playing as a sort of a, very like a quarterback at times. Michael... Maguire gives it across here and Decky McCusker and Decky number eight and Decky sees a gap and 
burst of pace through it and gives a fist pass inside and comes back out here and Sean McCarron and Sean looks over and he gives it to Enda Cassidy and Enda gives that ball over to Paul. Paul McCusker has come out in the full back. Michael Maguire comes up and that little dink ball inside looking for Shade Easley. But it's a judge maybe to have he touched, it, he touched, touched on the ground. It on the ground well. but yeah. A feature very much of Anthony's play. They're looking for that little dink ball inside. Very dangerous, very hard to defend against if the forward can get it out in front. of When you have forwards of the calibre, Paul McCusker, if he's in there, or Sean Cassidy, Ross Bogue comes forward with the ball. And Ross, yeah, Dev, yeah Ross. Probably, probably yeah. took one step too many. Looked to be in two mains. Yeah. Needed to get the pass away and didn't. But and again, it just displays sort of what uh, I mean. Edirne celebrated that practically yeah. like a score. So yeah. it shows you how determined they are here tonight. Oh no, Edirne really very much up for this one. And Decky McCusker gives it and. Decky gives it inside and Louis looks for Paul and Paul manages to gather that one but he's surrounded by Gales men and this time the Gales turn it over and it was Conor McShea that time and Conal Quinn plays a long ball inside and a oh, dangerous looping ball in there but yeah I think I think the wee, there was a wee nudge there was just enough uh, yeah. to put the, the Conor McAleer off and that was actually uh, experienced uh, by Manus, Manus, there. Magu yeah, yeah. Manus Maguire and Decky, Decky gives it over to his brother Paul and Paul looks up to see who's making a run inside and he elects to play it long and it, it's with Sean Cassidy and Sean turns on the loop. Right. As previously stated, there's only one result there. Yeah, again, and part of the problem Sean, here is... Sean Cassidy after scoring... That's his fourth point, I Sean think, make it. his fourth point. And that's uh, two, two from play and two, two. from freeze. Yeah. Uh, just just one thing to remark, actually, the Gills are not putting tackles in. They're certainly not putting enough pressure out, out the pitch. Oh, here, the, no. that one looked. He nearly got it turned out, but Keen managed to get it away to Conor McShay, and Conor look, was looking inside, and I thought he was going to give it to Noel McIntyre, but he likes to go forward with it. And it ends up with... Uh, Neil McDermott is it yeah and it's it given is. inside Josh Josh Horn and this time yeah I think there was, a, there was a second free in that I think Josh was also fouled um, I, I suppose just remarking on the fact that uh, I suppose in terms of the gills there's that not putting hands on one thing I think uh, uh, I suppose Richie's missing tonight oh John Hill a judge to have been fouled that time by Michael Maguire and Great, yeah. ba great battle between these two. Oh, uh, very, very, very much so, um, and uh, it's good to watch. Again, I suppose the Gales need to get more ball inside. Uh, I suppose John's having to come out a wee bit deeper to get possession. So it's played across, and Jack Tierney's made a run forward this time and gets the ball under control, and he's faced by Conor McGee, and he, he goes back inside, and Ross Bogue, and Ross has the ball, and he gives it to Josh Horn, and Josh a fist pass inside to Conal Quinn, and Conal looks up, or number five on his back, and he gives it to Conor Love, and Conor snaps at that one, but this time it's cut out inside there, and I think that's Decky McCusker, is it? Yeah, there's not time. Yeah, no, it's not. Now lay sides failing, it's Manus Maguire. Manus Maguire, yeah, yeah, he managed to come out with it. Um, again, I suppose a bit of a, a pot shot there from, from Connor. Um, and, and I suppose again, he hasn't really had much opportunity uh, to get on the ball. I suppose in the Gales would like to see him and John O'Hill in particular getting on a lot more ball, particularly in the danger zone. Because um, as it stands at the minute, they're just not able to create enough chances, not able to get the ball up to their full forward line. And again, that's all down to he's tackling there and he's, uh, I suppose, hunger uh, to win the game. Um, because obviously there's something really to play for. Very much a feature is, is Edirne's hunger at, at, um, in this first half, as uh, you know, as you rightfully pointed out there, they're really, they're hunting in packs and in defence, they've turned over a lot of of, of Gale's attacks, um, but it, it, it's, the, it's the speed of their transition, and also, you know, Sean Casty inside there is on fire, and you know, he, he has... Ryan McDonald and a bit of bother in there and it'll be interesting to see, you know, when the Gales go in at half time, will any changes be made or you know, whatever, because definitely Edirne very much on top in this one here at half time. Nine points to two. Yeah, and uh, again, Edirne's uh, accuracy has been very good. There's been, a, I suppose, a, a few sc shots missed, um, a couple of ambitious shots, but at the end of the day, when you see the quality of some of their scores, uh, it's been excellent. Uh, again, the Gales, I suppose, very dependent on... Um, they had a free from uh, 
John Rehill and then I'd score from play from John Rehill. Uh, the rest of the forwards obviously have been involved. It, and again, it just displays that they're just not getting onto enough ball. I think maybe they only had maybe four, sh four or five shots in to total. Um, so there's a bit of, bit of work to be done there. Again, I think the difference between the two teams is the fact that Edney really have something to play for here. Yeah. Uh, and I think there is that hunger. It's more like a championship game for them. The Gales, you sort of feel that um, they're looking more towards the championship um, maybe with uh, the, the players that they have out. Uh, they're trying to give them as much game time as possible and um, again just not maybe tackling with that tenacity that Edirne are doing and that's maybe making the difference overall Yeah as, as you see there are some of the scores flashing across the screen and um, there are Gondley Harps now I've had a fist pump here from <laughs> Niall Smith <laughs> which he'll never admit to in public Not, not at all um, Leading by 9 points to 2 against Belcoo bit of a local derby there Irvinstown won 4, Aaron Gales 4 points um, I assume these are all half time scores Yeah Yeah, uh, I'm getting the nod of approval there from Kieran Maguire so he's the man that knows uh, Oh a goal for Belle Coo. Yeah, that's um, going to make it interesting. Maybe these men on my right hand side with the fist pumps are coming <laughs> back. I could be the sandwich. I could be the meat and the sandwich here before this one's over. Uh, St. Pat's Donut 2 1. I didn't catch that one. Got, got away on me there. It's Derry Lynn, I think they're playing. Um, I think it was five points. So, yeah, everything to play for here um, in the second half for Edney because that game is quite close there between Canali and Belnalek. And, you know, if Belnalek were to were to win that one and Edney win, uh, I assume... That's Edney in the final then? Yeah. Edney are in the final line. Yeah. And Kieran and Maguire might give us some of those permutations yeah. at, a, at, a, at a later stage. But I think we'll uh, go for a, a little break here, maybe a... Bit of liquid refreshment, yeah, of the tea variety. Of the tea variety, yeah. Um, but again, I suppose it'd leave it interesting in the second half because there's no foregone conclusions here. And uh, I suppose with that game in Benelec being so tight, it's going to leave it very, very interesting. Yeah, it was just the, the we go through there. You know, it, it's flashed up in front of us. Derek Arney Harps already there. Canali 15. Is this as it stands, lads? Or yeah, yeah. Kieran, a, Kieran a, yeah, right, we'll let Kieran Maguire talk you through yeah, this while so we go for a cup of tea. There, there, is a, there is a couple of scores still coming through. So the half-time score uh, that I'm just after getting is uh, St. Pat's is 2-1, Derry Lynn 6 points. That's St. Pat's leading by a point in that game there. Um, the half-time score is Derry Gonley 7 points, Bell Coo 1-2. And in some of the other games, uh, Timor is leading 1 6 3 points against Maguire's Bridge. But now we can run through it on your screen. So, as it stands, this is a half time score. Belcou 1 2, Derry Gonley 7 points. The game here in Brewster Park is Edney leading Enniskill and Gales by 9 points to 2. I did update you on that one there between St Patrick's Dona and Derry Lynn. So it's 2 1 to St Pat's, 6 points to Derry Lynn. And half time score, Irvinstown 1 4, Aaron Gales, Bleak 4 points. And as Porrick is keeping us updated in Balalek, there it is, Canali 1 5, Balalek 1 4. So the second half has actually started in that game. They're probably a bit ahead of us. But um, you are right to say, Morris, that Canali need to win that game. They, they need to win it with Edney winning here because it draws no good. So if we look at the scoreboard or the tables as it stands, Derry Gonley at the top on 20 points. Canoli 15 points as it is but with a one point lead over Benelec and I'm sure given Benelec and Canoli's proximity in the area as well that Benelec would like nothing more than to deny Canoli a chance to get into the Division 1 final but it's Canoli who are in the Division 1 final at the minute at half time here but that could all change in the second half Edney are sitting on 14 points there Benelec 11 Enniskill and Gales 11 as well Ern Gales and 10, Derry Lynn 8, Belcou 6, Irvinstown 6 and St Pat's Dona is on 2 points. Now, apart from the tussle between Edney and Canali for the Division 1 final, what we're watching for is going to be the Championship groups. 
Now, we'll see that more so in the uh, at the end when this game's over, when we have got final scores and we can't update the table because, I mean, even updating that table there, that could all change. Vanilek with only being one point behind Kinale, so uh, we'll have to keep our eye on that there. There's a couple Porix just after informing us that the second half has started. Tomas Carrigan has come on um, that game, so he has come on replacing Rory McAloon. I think Canali. I'm sure the news is filtering through to them that uh, Edney are winning here and they know that they have to get something from that game to keep their place in the Division 1 final. And one other score, Gart McGenry is keeping us updated for the timor Maguire's bridge game. It's Timor 1-7, Maguire's bridge 3 points. That's all the news that I have at the minute. Uh, Thank, thanks, Kieran, for that very comprehensive report there of, of what's going on. Yeah, and our thanks to the reporters who are... Uh, not every place is a stand to stand under, so I'm sure some of them are standing out in the well, I, held an umbrella. I tell you, thought is just bringing to mind that any of these venues that don't have the floodlights that we have here and the way that darkness seems to be approaching on us, by the time these games are finished, visibility will be very poor. Um, yeah, just looking before before we go back to Kieran for Division Two, um, Niall, your thoughts on on what we've just heard there? Yeah, again, it's going to be an interesting half there in uh, Balnalek. Uh, now, Tomas is on the pitch. It'll be uh, just interesting to hear Balnalek uh, cope with that, and also um, I suppose Canali really obviously are going for the win there. They have to, um, and they can't depend on what happens here. But again, just looking at the pitch here, I mean, there's a bit of a breeze there in in Brewster Park, and uh, it got up there for a few minutes so we, uh, it could be that the Gales will have that in the second half which could be a, a crucial factor um, in, in the second half um, which means that they just have to go for it so anything could happen you know yourself in these sort of games Yeah absolutely and, and conditions no doubt will play a massive part in the second half in all of these games so maybe we'll go back to Kieran there now for an update on yeah, Well it's, just, it's something that uh, Boric Porik McGurn is at that game between Kinali and Banalek and in half time he was obviously trying to figure out the league tables and he was saying that he is completely soaked in there but it, the group for the senior championship as it stands would be Derry Ghani, Banalek, Ennis Gillen and Ross Lee and group two would be Kinali, Edney, Aaron Gales and Devnish. So that's as it stands, uh, Porik was working that out. Well. Neither of them's handy. Some very, <laughs> some very intriguing stuff there. Uh, you know, the one that springs to mind is a couple of local derbies there. I think Aaron, so, yeah. Aaron Gates and Devnish. And yeah, a repeat of the, uh, I suppose the the final, the intermediate final a couple of years ago, which was a, a good feisty affair too. Okay, we're going to go over to Kieran now for an update on Division Two and what's happening there. I think it was pretty much cut and dried yeah. uh, as so regards the promotion. Div so Division Two as it stands now. Those league, just when you were talking about those championship groups that could change because if Devonish were to win their game they would lead progressly and it would be Devonish ending up in group one so them playing against Edney is predicating on the result that they get so at the minute Rosli are on the top on 17 points Devonish are on 16 Timor are on 15 as are Newtown Butler Tempo 14 Disneyski 10 Maguire's Bridge 8 Co 5 Adlin C 3 and Brookborough have no points but um, the the important thing for Division 2 is that, that result between Newtown and Devnish because that result is going to determine which of Ross Lee and Devnish is going to be seats 7 and seats 8. It's not dependent on who wins Division 2, it yeah. depends on who finishes at the top of the league. Okay, thanks for clarifying that Kieran. And have, have we an update Sorry, on that score again, Newtown Butler and... Well, at, ha at half time it was Newtown Butler 1-6 Devnish 7 points ok so, so um, but it's still tight all to play for there and I suppose you know Niall when we look at this it, 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 it's a great concept you know and it really makes that all in the leagues that there's something to play for and you know not just you know teams playing to get into finals but teams playing for that position and the seeding and everything in the championship draw it is yeah and it can make a difference to your season if you if you hit the if you get the right sort of draw obviously every game in the championship is difficult everybody wants to win it but uh, if you get the right run obviously that can set you up for a, a good championship um, 
again, it's uh, I suppose the league is like that. It just there's very little room for error uh, the way it's set up at the minute. Uh, I know that uh, I suppose some clubs are debating is it the right way to, to play the league in terms of have just I suppose one round after the club fixtures. Um, but um, again, that's that's something that's open to debate. I suppose we've had a couple of seasons of it, and this is what we've got down to at the end of each uh, season is the fact that uh, we're down to the last day uh, for for important decisions. Yeah, so I think uh, maybe we would take a, a wee break here now from Brewster Park for a couple of minutes before the players come back onto the field. So for myself, Morris McLaughlin and, and Niall Smith here in Brewster Park, we'll be back shortly with the second half to see what happens here in Brewster Park. intervals <laughs> we're back here in Brewster Park the teams have come out onto the field the lights are on and everybody's home yeah I see the girls are about to bring on Connor Watson there so Connor Watson who played a big part and another two guys coming on 20 and 21 is, is uh, um You'll have to help me out here. Kieran Smith, actually. Kieran, Kieran Smith, Smith at 21, yeah. Is 21, and who's 20 there? Yeah, Connor Watson's 21, 20. 20, yeah. And who's number 19 is after them? Um, Kieran, we'll have a wee look here. It's uh, Paddy, uh, Paddy Rehill. Oh, Paddy Rehill, yeah. yeah. So Kieran and, and Connor have gone into wing half back there, yeah. so uh, obviously they're looking to tighten up the defence. Um, Full back line remaining the same? F full back line's the same, and I suppose they've had a, they had a tough first half there. Uh, when it came down to it. So, Jared Gollard throws in the ball and the players go up for it and the ball comes in, Conor McShea, and he looks to get it away at that time and it, it falls in here, Paddy Rehill, and Paddy gives it back out to Josh Horn and Josh gives it inside there and Brandon Horn and Brandon has an opportunity here with the right foot and will that one curl? It's curling it's and it's curled. Oh, it's Sorry, Ross it's Ross Bogue. Yeah, great Ross, score. Great score from Ross Bogue, the yeah. other midfielder. And again, I think Ross is making a statement here. This is what the Gales needed to start the second yeah. half. But a statement down and they're pushing up now on the on the kick out. So it'll be interesting to see who had any cope with this. Definitely the breeze. A factor when you've seen the way that one curled in and flicked on nicely from Connor, Connor McGee and Sean McCarron. And Sean pulls it up and he looks and Decky McCusker made a run. But a bit of control here from Connor McGee and... As the wind starts to get up here in Brewster Park and Shea, Deasley and Shea gives it out over the far side there and Chris Snow and Chris toe to hand, he looks inside and he's got his Paul Maguire centre half back and Owen Donnelly making a run. Yeah, and I mean, uh, with um, Chris Snow out the pitch here, it'll be interesting to see how the Gales cope with that because yeah. Chris was pretty effective in the first half there. He's made a wee bit of a mistake. Yeah. yeah. Not really an evening for dwelling on the ball and Paul McCusker and Paul gives it to his brother and the two guy, two McCuskers look to move forward and Shade Easley gives it out and it's back out and this time it's over with Paul McGuire and Paul back in there and I think that was Niall McGuire and it's over with Ryan McGuire and back. Louis Donnelly gives it back and Niall McGuire on his back with Paul McCusker and Paul 14 on his back and he gives it inside Ryan McGuire and Ryan gives it to Connor McGee and Connor with a chance here on the left foot but he's tackled just as he goes to shoot and we've had a, no 
an update from Belnalek here, which is quite interesting. Belnalek have taken the lead with 20 minutes remaining. So Gales, Gales are playing it pretty tight here at the back. Um, they're playing it around. Uh, they've been outnumbered, but if they get the ball out, actually, they, they have space up the pitch. They now have three up. There's Conor McAleer, John Rehill, and Conor Love. So Paddy Rehill and Paddy gives it out, and he gives it to Josh Horn, and Josh gives it over to, was it Kieran Smith? He gives it to right, uh, And Paddy Rehill there with the ball. Oh, Josh, ambitious pass. Still but there, though. It's still there, and oh, Manus Maguire <laughs> manages. Ma bit yeah. of cuteness there from Manus. Managed course, yeah. to clear it, that one. It, but that's the first time they've really moved the ball at pace, the Gales, yeah. in this game. And the difference that it made, um, the Edney had pushed up so far, um, and it actually left themselves exposed. I mean, this is what's going to be interesting with Edney. Will they stick with this because of the fact that they're so far ahead mm. uh, to have a, a lead to retain? Louis Donnelly and Louis moves forward with purpose and Louis looks up and he gives it to Conor McGee and Con oh rather high tackle that time was Kieran, yeah. Kieran, Kieran Smith, Smith yeah. number 21 is back and Jared Goller will have a, a word here but I think that's as uh, far as it's going to go that's as far I suppose you know conditions are, are difficult there's no doubt about that and Chris Snow will make the track up here and Etherney will be in no hurry with this one. We have three and a half minutes played in the second half. So, Chris, it'd be difficult enough because the breeze is swirling. It's very difficult enough. As we look at the rain, it looks to be driving down it the is. field all right. It's, so it's, it's into his face and, and obviously uh, with a, a right-footed kicker as well, um, the way yeah. he's going at it here, he's going pretty straight at it. So he comes up and he strokes it and it goes out to the left and wide. Um, not wouldn't be too perturbed about that. Any opportunity, Edney will try and kill the game. They will, and again, the key thing for them is not to allow the Gales to build and get momentum. Well, it's about game management for them at this stage, and that one goes over the top, and Paddy Rehill, headband on, goes for this one, and he... And Paul Maguire goes, but it's Conor McAleer and flicks that one up, but Paul Maguire ends up with the ball and Paul moves cross field and gives a fist pass that nearly went astray, but Louis Donny managed and Shea Deasley's in space and he fist passes it forward, Sean McCarn and oh, Sean hit, heavy enough hit, but... Yeah, I think that was experience on youth there yeah. uh, for a moment. Um, um, again, Sean, to be fair to him, has been standing up pretty well there tonight, but uh, a two-man hit uh, yeah. didn't help matters. It was a frontal challenge as well. So uh, free from, for Etherney here. We're almost five minutes played in the second half, and the Gales started brightly a point from Ross Bogue underneath us here, underneath the stand, and Jared Goller giving a, a tick there to... Ross Bogue, was it, or Brandon? I think it was Brandon in that yeah. case. Um, as was, again, this suits better than he slow it down. Slow um, it down. And keep, keep the calm yeah, and yeah. Um, don't let the, the Gales get any momentum. Um, and this is where it's going to be interesting. And I suppose in this sort of a situation, possession is key. If you hold possession and, and you know, slow it down and, and increase the pace when you want to. Well, when you have players there of the experience... So there's been a black card in the, in the game in Belnalek. It's um, Lee Cullen. Well, we believe it's one of the Cullens, I think, that well, I was saying there. So, um, no, well, well, um, so again... There's a 50% chance we're right. Oh, well, well, yeah, I think so. Uh, it's, it's one of the twins. <laughs> yeah. It's one of them, whichever one is wearing number six on his back. But there's a black card which could have an impact in that game. And as far as we know, Belnalek are still leading by a point. As the Gales come out here with the ball and Paddy Rehill, who falls deep, and he gives it out this time to Ronan Beatty and Ronan moves forward, number seven on his back and looks inside and he gives it to Brandon Horn and Brandon, number eight on his back, first game back tonight for Brandon and I'm sure Simon Bradley would be glad to get Brandon back into some game action. He looks for Ross Bogue and Ross gathers that one and strong on the ball and moves forward and wins his free. Yeah, again, cute work by uh, Aaron Egan, uh, uh, fell him outside the scoring zone. Yeah. So John Rehill and jo oh John gives a nice ball inside there and it's given to, to Connor Watson. Connor Watson. Connor who big impact on last year's championship. A lot of game time. Ross that one looks like oh. an oh but it's Jack Tierney and Jack gives a little flick ball inside and it's Connor Love and or no, sorry. Connor McAleer Connor there. McAleer and Connor gives a high looping ball and that one goes wide, but 
Yeah, I think uh, Jack made the run to try and get the return and Connor got caught in two mains and maybe too narrow an angle in the end up front to take that shot. So Chris Snow with this kick out, we've seven minutes played in the second half here and kind of, it, it's suiting Edirne at the moment, you know, broken play, but that one and it, onto it comes Kieran Smith and Kieran inside and John Real bears down on goal, but, and there's advantage and Curly has the ball and Curly fires to the net. And that's what Curly does. Yeah, um, that's what, yeah. you know. And it's one, one of the first uh, kickouts that uh, the Gales have won of Edernie's um, that pushed yeah. up on each of the players. Edernie went wide with it, uh, got beaten for pace, um, and unfortunately for Edernie, but fortunately for the Gales, um, it ended up in the back of the net. Yeah, uh, great, great play in there, and there. John Rehan and John turned and he twisted and he gave it a curly and you know, typical poacher's goal, low and hard to the net, Decky McCusker, Etherney looking to strike back here, only three points in this one and that's not a lot really with the breeze but Paul McCusker and Paul gives it inside and Louis Donnelly and Louis looks inside and looks to shoot and oh, that time Ryan Maguire fired a shot in and it hit the upright, Keen New Newman didn't know a lot about it and you know, fine margins, the width of a post. Yeah, I think I think uh, possibly a, a crowded def a defence there he might have been as well, just to go for a point to take the sting yeah. out of it. Turnover ball here now, and the Gales are on, on, the, on the run. Connor McAleer, fist pass, and Connor Love turns one way, turns the other way. And Manus Maguire difficulty sticking with him there, and it's given back inside there. And I think it's Connor McShea who's over on that far side, isn't it? Uh, no, Connor McAleer and Connor Love and now the Gales and they're in again here and a chance of another goal and another goal indeed and I think that it's time Paddy Real, that time. Paddy Real the substitute and yeah. from a seven point deficit the Gales have turned it round here and we have a draw match with nine minutes of the second half played and you know we did say that the conditions the elements yeah, would play a factor and there's no doubt the rain is driving down it's driving down the field and it also I think the difference Paddy Rehill's made we see the replay in. here Connor Love a great little ball inside and Paddy Rehill and he turned inside and fired it to the net with his left foot and we're back in live action here and the Gales really have some momentum going here and Brandon Horn plays it back Connor Watson and gives it outside to Josh Horn and Josh gives it inside to Connor McShea and little pop ball inside and these Gales forwards are starting to get on top inside here and Owen Donnelly looks to go down on the ball but it's flicked up this time. It's Connor McShea it's in the Connor corner. Connor McShea and he gives it back out to Connor Love and looks for Connor Watson but this time I think it's Niall Maguire, is it yeah, there? Yeah, Niall managed to nip in there. Niall managed uh, it was to important nip in one there. To and yeah. Etherney really need to... to oh! It's a good hit. hit Very good, good hit, hit by Josh. Fair shoulder. And Josh gives it inside to John Rehill and the Gales again. Looking to capitalise on Conor McAleer that time fires it in but it goes wide a great opportunity for the Gales to take the lead yeah and Josh did what Josh does best uh, just obviously getting the hit no. timing it perfectly and turning the ball over no it was a, it, it, it was a good old style shoulder shall we call it yeah no doubt but again the key thing here is the key players for the Gales are now getting on top of their game which they weren't doing in the first half they're managing to get possession in the right places that's creating these opportunities and Chris no slips and this time Connor McShea and he flicks it up Paddy Rehill and Paddy who's had a big impact since he's come on as a half time substitute and that time it's Ross Bogue again Ross Bogue again That's and the second the point. Ross Ross's second point and the Gales go into the lead and dominant now in, in, in this game 10 points to 9 they lead but you know the goals significant yeah. and you know people say, oh, say it's an old cliche goals win games and it, it does but and but also kick out swing games at, yeah. at, at times yeah. because what's happening here is in the first half Adderney were, were really putting the gills under pressure in their kick out they couldn't win a kick out the opposite has turned now in that well, uh, uh, gills are putting pressure on Adderney and are losing I think in fact Adderney have lost maybe three their last three kick outs if not their last four well yeah it's a carbon copy and I suppose the elements have got worse if any Thing and this rain is driving from right to left and driving into the face of Chris Snow as he looks to kick out the ball and maybe 
you know, from our, our, our vantage point here, we may not have realised the significance of that in, in the first half and what yeah. the difficulty that Kane Newman was, was facing as Etherney got that press on. Well, there's, there's no, you can see that, and particularly on the kick out, in that there's very few options. And um, again, I suppose in the first half, when they needed to, they went long, but a lot of the time, Etherney got the short kick out away in the first half, and it's just not happening at the minute. Etherney with two substitutes warming up here. Owen McCarvey wearing number 17 on his back, and the man with number 18 known as back Michael Moss uh, are going to be introduced into the fray so Chris Kelly looking to shake things up here a bit and try to get Etherney back into this game and in Belenalek at the minute it's a draw it's 1-6 Etherney need to win and can all, and can all either draw or lose for Etherney to make the league final so it's really all to play for as we enter the final and again, that was another opportunity oh, for Mark. Connor McGee and Connor's bust through, and Connor has. Oh. What a superb goal! What a superb piece of individual skill by Connor McGee there. He gathered the ball, he rounded his man, he looked up. Kane Newman approached, and with the left foot, he coolly just lobbed it over his head and into the corner of the net. Yeah, brilliant play because again, there was an opportunity to take a mark, and he didn't. Yeah. Uh, no, he, he didn't. didn't take it, he went for it, he, and yeah, Adderley so badly needed that yeah. score. Oh, it's, I mean cool finish. It was and again Edney's first score of the second half and in fact I think it's only their maybe second shot of the second half or third shot sorry. So Shea Deasley and Sean McCarran are replaced by Owen McCurvey and Michael Moss and Edney back in front here by two points and a greatly needed boost for them there as we approach the halfway period of this Second half and Michael Moss and Michael gives it. Man coming thundering forward there. Michael Maguire from full back and Michael looks to Paul and Paul but immediately bottled up by Gale's men and yeah, it's um, a bit put under yeah, serious pressure. Serious there. And again, pressure again, and Ross Bogue takes the early. ball quickly and out in front here, but greasy ball and Michael Moss managed to slip in and a vital interception there and it's given over here and the man that got the goal, Connor McGee, who's you know really helped his team to take a significant step towards this league final if the result stays the same in, in Belenalek. So everybody's doing their part to bring us down to the last few minutes and make this exciting for everybody. Yeah, it's, there's no doubt that it's exciting. I make it that there's uh, uh, 15 minutes gone, so we're halfway through F the second half. 15 minutes gone and there's not long left in Belenalek from what my experts on my right-hand side here tell me. Chris Snow with the ball and Chris gives it across to to Paul McCusker and Paul moves inside and looking for Sean Cassidy and you know my, and Sean but this time Ryan McDonald physically gets on top and gives it out and that time is given over to uh, uh, Paddy Rehill was over there and Kian Newman now elects to to join the fray and he gives it to Josh, it Josh, Horn, yeah. Josh Horn and Josh tackled there by Andy Cassidy and Ryan Maguire but Ronan Beatty manages to get it over in the far wing there and it's Connor Watson Connor gives it to Connor McAleer and is given back there to Cian Newman and Cian gives a long ball on, over to Ross Bogue and Ross who scored two points from play in the second half and Ross toe to hand and up the field and looks to move across and this game intriguing now the Gales had really looked like they were going to swamp and run over Etherney but Etherney managed to get that goal from Conor McGee and now Etherney have everybody bar one behind the ball and Ronan Beatty and Ronan gives it to Josh Horn is back with Ronan Beatty and Ronan looks up and left footed and he looks to get Conor McShay away and Conor McShay and Paul Maguire go into the corner looking for this one and Again, the ball was a wee bit too ambitious there. The yeah, uh, ball was a wee bit yeah. too, but clever, clever play from, from Conor McShay. He kicked it out for the line ball. But yeah, I see lock and, lock and love on now for the Gales. Uh, and it's uh, um, uh, Cal, uh, Cal's coming off there, is he? Who, who's come on, sir? See, I'm just looking to see who's actually come off. I haven't seen anybody Decky. come off yet. Oh, Decky just... Mm, 
I'd like to see that one it's again. Borderline like, now, I think that. Yeah, borderline yeah, now, borderline and big decision there because it's a kickable free and. It, it is, yeah. Again, just to point out, Cal McAnaspy's come off uh, Larkin Love. I think it is. It's on now. Fortunately, we have no replay on that one, but. Um, powers that be, maybe are like the boys in Croke Park, <laughs> they don't want any contentious ones. So that one, yeah, has, John's put that yeah, one away. John has put that one away and we have a one point game here, uh, 12 points, 1-9 to Etherney, 2-5, 11 to Inniskill and Gales, we're maybe looking for an update, the game in Ballinalec. We'll find out shortly what's going on there, but uh, we have 12 and a half minutes left here in this one, plus injury time. Great kick out from Chris Snow. And Connor McGee, a judge, have been fouled and looked up, and Decky and Decky looking for this one. And Decky gathers it, and he looked to get it away, and he wins the line ball this time. And Decky McCusker, huge influence. Yes, yeah. I'm him, Such I, an him, him, him and Connor McGee yeah, actually him working and Connor well McGee, together. Paul McCusker, and Paul. You know, such vast experience on the field. Yeah, and it's badly needed at the minute, I suppose. So it loops in, and then to Cassidy, and then to gives it to Louis Donnelly, and Louis gives it to Paul, and Paul looks up, and Paul goes for an ambitious one, and got it. well, ambitious or not, a badly needed score, and Etherney moved two points in front again, 13 points to 11. We have 11 and a half minutes to play in the second half here. Etherney lead 13 points to 11. Short kick out that time to Connor McShea, and Connor gives it back to Jack Tierney. And Jack, little loop pop ball over the top. <coughs> Excuse me. And Ryan McDonald, and Ryan gives it this time, and it's given out to Ronan Beatty. And Ronan moves forward, number seven on his back. To Rain drives down here, Connor McAleer, and Connor looks inside, and it's Paddy, oh no, it's sorry, John it's John Rehill. And John Brandon and Brandon flicks that one in and oh, oh Chris No manages somehow done very well there with the greasy ball to come up and come out with the ball and Decky McCusker and Decky gives it out to Owen Donnelly and Owen on the far side. Owen looks inside and he give it back to Chris Snow and Chris looks over here. He is Connor McGee in loads of space over here on the far side and you know, you have to give credit to Etherney when it looked like the Gales were going to come back and swamp them, you know, to come back to get that goal and, you know, to create another goal opportunity there. If the Yeah, at one stage you thought that uh, Etherney had sort of given up the ghost there until yeah. they got that goal because it, nothing seemed to be going right for them uh, and then all of a sudden it just gave them a bit of a, a spurt. So Chris Snow and Chris gives it inside and it was Niall Maguire and Sean Cassidy and it's back out to Chris Snow and he has lots of runners and he has loads of men over on this far side here and it's Connor McGee, the man who scored that superb goal and Owen and Owen look, Owen Donnelly looks and he's done very well actually to get it back out to Paul McCusker and Paul gets it back out to Decky and Decky gets it inside to Paul again and surrounded by Gales men and he's looking to get a shot away and he manages it just like Jared Guller had. He was thinking about he it. He was Jared. thinking about the yeah. over carrying there but this time it goes in Edney's favour and sometimes that's the way fine margins in a game. Yeah, they still managed to keep it alive here, moving still the ball managing around. And the experience of this game management by is only to be admired by Adderney here. Chris Snow and Chris gives it to Decky McCusker and Decky still a draw and there's 90 seconds left so Adderney really have all to play for in this last 10 minutes and Louis, Louis moves forward and he's surrounded That's by Gales men but I thought that was, yeah. I thought it was a free in I there now. I thought it was yeah. a free there now and was sort of a lazy challenge a from Ross Bogue. Lazy challenge from Ross, Ross Bogue and the Gales come out with the ball and man with number 21 on his back, which is Kieran Smith, gives it out and John Rehill and John playing very deep and Connor McShea and tackles flying in here now, but they're being missed and Carl Connor McShea manages to come away and he's in space and he plays a one-two at number 23. Who's Lock and Love was? It? Yes, Lock and Love. And again, mm -hmm. uh, I suppose Connor looked up there for the early ball into yeah. Connor Love, but uh, again, uh, um, Adelie managed to cover. 
and it's out with Ross Bogue and we have eight and a half minutes to play and a good mm. oh judged have been a foul there by Jared Goller yeah I think I think actually Ross's challenge earlier was probably more of a foul uh, I think way Jerry gave it was the hand on the shoulder once you go yeah, over the shoulder nah, that's it you? yeah but this little break oh, was played inside there and the little pop and curly goes to flick it up and he's looking for support and he has it with John Rehu 14 on his back and played back out and Ross Bogue and Ross gives it inside and Paddy Rehill the man who got the second goal must say it's been an excellent second half here in these conditions these two teams really serving up some great football uh, Connor McShay and Connor gives it over that far side and it's Paddy Rehill over there at 19 on his back and Paddy gives it over and it's Connor Watson I think or yeah it's Connor Watson, Connor Watson and Ronan Beatty Ronan Beatty and it's back with Connor Watson seven and a half minutes to go and he plays it inside but it's a good tackle Connor he was looking for Connor McAleer and Connor Watson and back out with John Rehill and John looks to move forward and it's thought that was a free but difficult difficult for a referee on nights like this too in these conditions I must say in, in, in fairness Jared Gollard's handled this game very well credit to him he has Ro yeah and he's let it go which he's is let it go, the yeah, and that's Jared style he's, he's mm -hmm. a common sense referee Ross Bogue has the ball here and turns inside and gives it back and it's with Ronan Beatty and the Gales with the ball for the last maybe 90 seconds, two minutes, and but not making it. Oh, and there's a dangerous one, and it's cut out over on the far side there. And it's Ryan, Ryan, McGuire. Ryan, Ryan McGuire. I think that could be would it be borderline there, borderline, uh, like but possibly he pulled him down. Yeah, number, but I don't think Jerry's going to go that far. Number 20 coming on here, Paul McCarvey, and Paul, another man back from his travels, with number 20 on his back. I think he was. Uh, with maybe some of the teams in Boston there, maybe McInespies or... <laughs> now off comes Ryan Maguire. And we have and then uh, the a Canoli goal to... oh. from Sean McManus. Canoli, you would have to say, are probably now in the final. Is that a final score? No, they're still playing. So Canoli lead by three there, so all of Etherney's Endeavours here and hard work in the second half may be to no avail, but no doubt still a great way to finish up if they could get the victory or hold out for the victory here in Brewster Park. But the Gales still have a big say in this one, and John Rehan and John turns around and Connor McShay and Connor plays it over, and Ross Bogue and Ross thinking about the shot again he's looking for his third point from play in the second half and Curly has come out deep here Connor Love and little pop pass inside and oh it was Ben, ben a good idea but just unfortunately execution Another didn't work sub 24 who was that it was Ben Kettles Ben Kettles so the ball out and Etherney move forward with purpose here and it's Connor McGee and Connor moves up the field and Man down injured here it's looks Paddy, like Paddy Paddy Rehill Rehill looks, have, uh, looks like a hamstring. hamstring. Yeah. And Connor McGee and you'd feel if they could go three points up it'd be a huge score. Oh great little flick ball and Sean Cassidy and Sean No, I don't think it was Sean. Seventeen uh, Michael Moss, is it? Michael Moss. I think like, it's Michael. Yeah. And he took it well, he turned well. Oh, it's Owen McCarvey. Owen, yeah, a good, good score. He got up the pitch to take oh, that one. Owen McCarvey fires it to the net. So it's full time. And Canoli are in the league final. Canoli with that goal. Canoli in the league final. So Canoli have won that one in Belenelec. Sean McManus a goal, seemingly greasy night. Bit of a scrappy goal at the end there, but Canoli are in the league final and very much looks like, although Etherney are, you know, are a very strong position, five points up, three and a half minutes left in this one. The Gales moving forward with purpose again and 
Ross Bogan, Ross plays it back out to Ronan Beatty and Ronan looks across and Brandon Horn and Brandon number eight in his back looks up and he plays it in but um, I think it was Jack Tierney up there in the forward line was unable to collect that one and Man I think that's Manus Maguire over on the far it side is, gives yeah. it to Paul McCusker and I think they are, I think that's Paul on the far side. Yeah, and he's, and he's got a man bounding forward there, and that's Louis Donnelly, and Louis number nine is back, and Louis gives it inside to his brother Owen, and it's given out to Paul McCurvey, and Paul lobs that one in, but it just goes to the right and wide. Yeah, again, very good move and good support play by Adderney, the men, uh, the, a couple of different options there. Yeah. So the short kick out goes Connor McShea, and Connor gives it short, and... It's with um, it was Larkin Love. Larkin Love and Larkin with 23 on his back. One of the substitutes who's come in there and he gives it inside. Connor Smith flicks the ball back and Josh Horn and Josh is under pressure and under pressure from Paul Maguire and given inside now. And Connor McShea moves inside and Connor got through a lot of work in this second half, but he's been chased down there by Niall Maguire and he's back with Kieran Smith and flicked back inside and Connor and it's given inside to John Rehill and Gale's trying to manufacture a goal it's but good score by John. it is yeah. a very good score off his left foot uh, again so they kept it Gale's managed to keep the ball alive yeah, yeah. Uh, kept moving it forward um, a few, quite a few players involved in that move uh, and then John doing what John does best so with two minutes left in the game here in Brewster Park Heatherney lead this one by 2-10 to 2-6 16 points to 12 and you know it'll be disappointing for these other knee players after but they always knew you know it wasn't they could only do what they could do but Canali ending up in the league final Canali and Derrigonley will discuss that one at a later stage but it'll be a very interesting game so Paul Maguire and Paul gives it back there and there's Paul McCurvey coming around on the loop and Niall Maguire and Niall plays it across field and Paul Maguire gives it to Chris Snow and Chris Etherney looking to see this one out here with a bit of game management and Louis Donnelly and Louis plays a long ball inside and Sean Castley and Sean wins this one and tries to bear down on goal but well he's a, he's a judge to have over carried the ball that time and as we enter the final minute a bit of questioning maybe of eyesight and stuff here underneath this but <laughs> you'll get that as part and parcel part and parcel of uh, you know these games and decisions and there's a ball inside from Connor Smith and Curly was going from that one but it was knocked away yeah uh, to be fair um Erany have coped reasonably well yeah. with, with Connor, you know, yeah. um, and picking those one on one situations. Um, it, it, but you just give him half a chance, and you know what the, what happened with the goal. I suppose this is a free end now for the Gales. Uh, Ross is going to have a go from distance. I suppose the concerning thing for the Gales, you know, they came back 10 minutes in the second half, they were level, and um, number 16 now going to come on for, uh, for Erany. Uh, and that's James Devaney. James Devaney. Uh, Ross and put, Ross, put that Ross one over. has slotted that one over for his yeah. third point. And look, <laughs> there's a goal in it as we go into injury time here and stranger things than happen, have happened. And it depends, it's at the discretion now of Gerard Goller how long we have to play here as the substitute James Devaney comes on and moves across the field and gives the slip to Gerard Goller. And Moves inside. Chris Snow in no hurry to take this one out. We have 45 seconds of injury time played here in Brewster Park. Of very, very wet and very dark Brewster Park. We definitely needed the floodlights here. Keane Newman, a judge, to fouled. And yeah, Keane come out for oh, that one. Keane come out and a great ball forward there. And Decky McCusker and Decky will probably slot this one over the bar. Yes, Decky with the left foot and yeah, experience very, very, very yeah, experienced, yeah. very intelligent great player. But great, I don't know, was it Louis Donnelly or was it Conor McGee there in the middle of the field that took that 
quickly. Yeah, again, yeah, again the, it was quick thinking. The As Niall uh, McGrath comes on. The Gales had uh, pushed up uh, for that kick out, which they had to do. Uh, put put Kian Newman up, which uh, again, mm. so at this stage of the game, three points down, they had to take every every chance mm. to, on that, that occasion. So Kian plays that one long and bobbles around in there, and I think that Kieran Smith has the ball with 21 on his back, and Kieran plays it long inside and looking inside there, and John Rehill and John twists one way and turns and looking to manufacture a goal, I would think at this stage but he plays it in and this one looks to have drifted yes drifted to the left and drifted wide and it's that four point margin you know we always say about the insurance score and possibly yeah. with the insurance score and Owen Donnelly comes off underneath us here Owen who's had a good game back there in the full back line yeah Owen's worked very hard he's been up and down the pitch as well um, he's been up in the full forward line sometimes as much as been in his own defence but he's worked extremely hard so Chris Snow and Chris get great height on this one and Paul McCusker and Paul, Paul nips in there with Connor McShea and Paul but so Jared Goller brings that one on and Connor plays it in he's looking for Curly in there and what do you think? Back there was Niall Maguire, I think it was. It was and uh, uh, sorry, Andy Cassidy. Andy Cassidy yeah. and ball ends up out here on the far side with James Devaney, I think, it's substituted come on and it's played across field here and Connor McGee and Connor gives it to Paul McCusker and Paul back inside and Sean Cassidy who's come out deep here and bit of game management now by Edney and we have three and a half minutes of injury time played here and it's really down to what Jared Goller feels. We've had quite a few substitutes and I suppose there will be a bit of time to be added on here but can't imagine there'll be too much more. Uh, Sean, Sean Casty plays it back to Chris Snow and Chris looks over here and he's got Michael Maguire, Michael number three in his back and He's got Connor McGee over here underneath the stand and just Connor. Oh, greasy ball. Yeah, and Jerry looks like they're going to play on for another wee while George here. going to play on for. Oh. And Etherney swamp round this one and turn the ball over and out with it comes Sean Cassidy and Sean definitely has had a good game tonight and. He you has, know, yeah. Augers well for Etherney and I suppose Augers well for Fermanagh as well to see, you know, some of these players in such fine form tonight. But yeah, and I mean, obviously, you need, um, I suppose that's the good thing about the, this latter stage of the league and particularly going into the championship, uh, boys getting games, uh, game yeah. time is so important. You know, it's great to see Sean Cassidy, a player blighted, you know, with injury and, you know, Again, that was a good tackle by uh, Chris Snow. We had to do that um, yeah. because they were in trouble. So the ball landed over here with Kieran Smith. We're four and a half minutes deep into the fifth minute of injury time here, and it's got Scrappy in there and <laughs> Decky McCusker. And, and that's um, it. Jared Goller blows the final whistle here in Brewster Park. On, an, on a score line of 2-11 to 2-7, Etherney have beaten in the skill and Gales, but it all has been to no avail as the other result went against them with a late Canali goal, firing them into the league final against Durgan Lee Harps. Niall, an entertaining game and very, very poor conditions. It was, yeah, and I mean, when you take into account the conditions uh, and some uh, brilliant scores as well, I have to say, um, you know, the, the, the ball was so greasy, the ground was so greasy, but uh, very few mistakes in terms of uh, multiple turnovers or anything like that, which is normally what you would see in this sort of a situation. Um, so certainly, um, I suppose, both teams will take, um, I suppose, no, their, no. their own positives out of this. Um, Adani will be pleased with how they fought back after uh, conceding those two goals early on in the second half. The Gales will uh, look at it from the point of view that they fought back from what was a poor first half um, and I suppose the introduction of some of their more experienced players um, certainly um, I think helped them in the second half, particularly Paddy, uh, Paddy Rahill certainly made a difference when he came on. But uh, the fitness levels of both teams is pretty high as well. Uh, a lot of running uh, by both um, and you could see as the game went on they were, they were still 
still keeping that uh, level going. Um, but it's certainly a, a very entertaining game. Um, as was again for Edirne, it's disappointment in that they haven't made the final. Um, so it's going to be a, an interesting tussle, I think, in the final. No doubt, it, it'll, it'll be an interesting tussle. Yeah, I can only echo what you said. I'm very impressed by Edirne. And one thing, you know, their level of fitness. Um, they have experience. You know, you look from Chris Snow out, the Maguires, um, you know, you come out the field and you have to. Decky McCusker, you have Sean Casty, you have Conor McGee, you know, they have they have big players with with loads of his experience. I, I tell you one, they, they look a really, really well coached team who are, are very fit. Will have a part to play in the championship. Oh yeah, there's, there's no doubt. Well, Edirne always will, but uh, one thing about Chris Kelly, he has them well organised and um, very well coached. I mean, it was obvious that all the players knew what they were doing, they knew where to run, um, they knew, uh, I suppose, how to execute, execute the pass to the right place. Um, and, I mean, the one thing that was very obvious was actually they were running off the ball. Uh, I mean, Chris was shouting at them to, to get up the pitch when they got into possession, and particularly the younger fellas, like Sean McCarn and young lads like that, were absolutely uh, giving it their all as they, as they ran forward I mean you could see that that's what they were they were there to do and um, very impressed with them now I have to say from that point of view I suppose the look back at you know to be nine two up at half time to give that lead away to bring it back to nine all um, I suppose they'll, they'll question themselves with regard to that but on the flip side of that there's just I suppose the character that they showed to, to push out again and, and to keep going um, and I suppose you know again you have to the younger boys in particular will learn an awful lot from this experience Yes, as both management teams are in the, the famed huddle and I see Simon Bradley over there and the Gales having a good chat and down below is here Chris Kelly who definitely can, uh, I'd say, will come out of this one the happier of the two managers but Simon Bradley probably not be that too perturbed about this night because he's got you know the players or some of the players back we know there's more guys to come Johnny Cassidy you know etc and yeah we're gonna we're going to um, go over to Kieran now who's going to give us another detailed update on on all of the results tonight that have happened in division one and division two and will give us the championship tables and maybe we'll conclude then and maybe discuss that for a few minutes. We are getting the results coming through. I think first of all I would say thank you to the reporters who braved the weather tonight to send us these results and uh, uh, we really are grateful. So the results in Division 1, Belcou won 8, Derry Gonley 10 points. Here it was of course Ennis Gillen 2-7 to um, Edonese 2 11. I'll get a computer ticket down for me. Uh, that the game between St. Pat's and Derry Lynn is ongoing, but the score at the minute is St. Pat's 2 4, Derry Lynn 1 11. And the final game in Division 1 was Irvingstown 2 7, Aaron Gales 1 13. And I beg your pardon, that other game, of course, was Benelec 1 6, Kinoli 2 6. So Kinoli have made the final. Now we can look at the table. With it finishes with Derry on 18 points, Kinoli on 15, Edney on 14, Aaron Gales on 12, Benelec on 11, Ennis Gillen on 11, Derry Lynn on 10, Belcou on 8, Irvingstown on 4, and St Pat's no points. So that is how the this is how the table finishes, and from that we'll be able to sort out the championship groups in a minute. But if we move on to Division 2, Poe conceded to Ross Lee. Timor defeated Maguire's Bridge 3, 14 to 6 points. Uh, Brookborough conceded to Adrum C. Devonish defeated Newtown 114 to 17, and Tampo defeated Lisnesky 2 9 to 3 12. So that group or the D division two table finished like this here with Devonish at the top on 18 points they'll be the seventh seed in the senior championship Rosley are on 17 Tampo are on 15 Timor are on 15 uh, the rest of the table is after Timor it is 
Newtown Butler on 13, Listener Ski are on 9, Maguire's Bridger on 8, Co 5, Adam C 3 and Brookborough no points. So that completes the um, that completes the leagues and from the leagues now we can sort out the groupings. So we'll come back to us in two minutes and not only will we have the groupings, Mark, we'll have the run of the fixtures as well. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to get that off... Um can you fill for two minutes? Uh, <laughs> but I don't know if I can, but I know the man on my left hand side can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> People some, inter some, to at this so, stage. some interesting results there. Um, uh, give me that Belcoo Derogonley one again. What was it? No, do we have to start with that one? <laughs> well, I suppose really. Um, you know, I can only imagine. We, you know, looking at a few of those fixtures, a lot of them were dead rubber games. Uh, Belcoo possibly, you know, Irvingstown needed to win their game by a, a large margin, yeah. and Belcoo be defeated by a large margin. Yeah. You know, for the BNE, and I can only imagine maybe not being there that. Um, the Harps were throwing out a few players. Or? Okay, I mean, I suppose we're. Uh, I think it's it's all about who was available. Uh, I think when it came down to it, uh, but at the same time, no doubt about it, it's a derby game. You know, both teams haven't played against each other in a competitive fixture for a number of years, and um, so there would have been that sort of wee bit of an edge to it too. Um, so you know, one getting one up on the other when it comes down to it. Um, so um, I, I, I think the Harps will be disappointed. Yes, at, at losing the game after I suppose going through the league undefeated, um, but. I suppose Ben Lake, or sorry, Balku would have been very well up for it. Um, and a home game, there was no way they were going to let Derry Gunley out easy. That's that's for definite. Um, so I'd, I'd say it was a, a good tight game. And I mean, Derry Gunley were ahead, uh, I think 7-2 at one stage. And, um, so it looked as if uh, Balku really went for it. Uh, in the first half, I think Derry Gunley had seven points. Looks as if they only scored three in the second half. And if you only score three points, you know, maybe conditions, you know, were, were an issue there. OK, I think uh, we're able to go back to Kieran here and we're going to get the Fermanagh Senior Championship. Yeah. Uh, we, we're going to get it just up on the screen. Uh, OK, Morris, so, yeah. Uh, um, but we have got it for round one. Of course, round one of the Senior Championship takes place on the weekend of the 8th and 10th of September. And I'd say next week you're going to find out the dates and times uh, for these things here. But we're pretty sure that we have got the run of fixtures and couple of seconds you're going to see that on screen so in the first round in group a the group so in group a it's going to be Derry Gonley Harps, Erin Gales, Bleak, Benalek, Art McMurris and Rossley Shamrock so those are the four teams in round one Derry Gonley will play Rossley in Derry Gonley and Bleak will be at home to Benalek that leaves group b with Kinali, Devonish, Edney and Enniskillen so in that first round, Kinali will be at home to Devonish and Edney are going to have home advantage in the replay of tonight's game taking place in Edney and as we said, that's going to be between the 8th and the 10th of September. In round two, Rusley will be at home to Balik and Benalek will be at home to Derry Gonley. That's going to leave in Group B, Devonish at home to uh, Edney and Enniskillen at home to Kinali and those games are going to take place the week after. So there's going to be week on week some very tasty fixtures and the final round of games is going to take place on the weekend of the 23rd to the 24th of September. In Group A it's going to be Derry Gonley playing Bleak and Benalek playing Rusley and all these games are going to be in neutral venues. In Group B it's going to be Kinali playing Edney and Enniskillen playing Devonish. So that's the run, that's the first run of Group A and Group B. Um, for the senior championship for three games in three weeks. The first game will be, for some teams, will be at home, then uh, there's going to be a home away and a neutral venue. Thanks, Kieran, uh, for so quickly and so comprehensively uh, outlining. You can thank me, Marsh, but it is Phil doing all of this here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll thank Phil too. Um, Niall. Yeah, well, funny, ironically, just looking at those groupings, would you believe that the two groups, A and B, are very similar to what uh, the way it was set up last yeah. year? So, I mean, last year you had the Harps, uh, Blake, uh, Erngales and Benelec in the one group, and again the same this year, uh, you have Canali, 
Ennis Gillen and uh, Erony in the one group. And I think that just, um, again, I suppose shows you how tight it is. But um, I suppose they all know each other. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. I suppose maybe the, the format this time might be slightly different in terms of who's playing at home. I know the Harps last year, for example, played, I think, are in Gales in Bleak, maybe? No, uh, they played in Devonish. In Devonish. That's same, right. It's that's, exactly the same. That's right. And Belenelec play uh, Derry Gunley in Belenelec, which is the same as what happened last mm-hmm. year. So it, yeah. it is it's exactly the same. So And, and maybe it's the same in, the, in the, the second group too. The difference, I think, Chris Lay were in the other group last year because yeah. Aaron Gales played them in the preliminary quarterfinal. That's home right. game in Blake. That's right. That, that is right. Yeah. So, I suppose that's the one change to that group. Um, and again, it's it's just going to be um, it's going to be I suppose an interesting. Uh, in fact, that would leave it if that is the case. Ross Lay played Aaron Gales in Blake, which uh, again as was same as last year. Um, so here, listen. I suppose it's going to be very interesting. I suppose everybody's sort of looking towards that now. The league's done for most teams. You just have the finals to be played out, um, and then it's it's I suppose some teams would be saying right. It's right down to business now. So I suppose the full focus will be coming from all the management teams and, and each of the individual players in terms of what they have to do. The key thing about the championship, the first round, no matter what, is always important. That puts down your marker. You lose that game, uh, you're already scrambling to try and get through. Um, so that game is, is vital. And I suppose home advantage is always a crucial thing in these situations. Nobody wants to lose at home, particularly in the championship game. Um, so it's it's just going to leave it. Um, there'll be a good edge to it, I think, when we get to get to, get to the first round. Yeah, and it had some really intriguing first round fixtures. The, the first round fixture, Aaron Gales at home to uh, to Ben oh. um, It's exactly the same as last year. Ended up in a draw. It was actually Timor was in the group. That's right. That's who was in the group um, instead of Ross Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year, you, you're you're so right in your point. I mean, the first game you win it. You have one foot there in at least the preliminary quarter final. Um, you don't win it, you're on the back foot immediately. Yeah. But some very, very intriguing fixtures, and you know, we're really looking forward to. Um, yeah, and to I mean, them. The, the thing is, I mean, both sort of Devonish and, and Ross Lay are coming off the back of very positive league performances in Division mm-hmm. 2. I mean, people would say Division 2 is very different to Division 1, but when you get down to the championship, it's a different story. Devonish will be absolutely hungry. Um, they'll be coming out of the blocks. A uh, young team, full of running, uh, full of hunger, point to prove. Um, they haven't played in the senior championship for a couple of seasons, and a team with a, or a club with such a tradition, they'll really want to put a marker down, so they, it'll, they'll make life difficult. Uh, for every team in, in Group B, there's there's no doubt about that. And I suppose they're getting their their football off to a, a start against Canali in Canali. Um, and I suppose Canali have this game now in next week in terms of the league final. So I suppose for them that'll be part of their preparation uh, towards the, the first round of the championship. So uh, and I suppose Devonish will have something similar in terms of the Division Two final. Well, just before we wrap up here, indeed, we look forward to those finals, and I assume they're live on from Anna GA TV next week which with the intermediate and as well. uh, oh sorry we'll, we'll take a look at the intermediate and uh, those games will be live see my book off them a couple of weekends uh, uh, so in the intermediate championship the groups are as follows in group A it'll be Derry, Lynn, Maguire, Bridge, St Pat's and Tampo group B is Belcou, Newtown, Butler, Irvinstown and Timor so in Round one in Group A, which is games again taking place the 8th to the 10th of September. It's Derry Lynn at home to Maguire's Bridge and St Pat's at home to Tempo. In Group B, it's going to be Belcou at home to Newtown and Irvinstown at home to Timor. In the round two, then, will be Maguire's Bridge at home to Dona and Tempo at home to Derry Lynn with... In Group B, then it'll be Newtown at home to Irvinstown and Timor at home to Belcou. And the final round of fixtures taking place in neutral venues will be Derry Lynn against St Pat's. That'll be a repeat of tonight's game. Tampo against Maguire's Bridge. And in Group B, Belcou and Irvinstown and Timor and Newtown. So those are that's the run of the games as well and in the junior championship of course it's Lisnesky, Co, Lisnesky, Co, Adramsey and Rickborough those are the four teams in that there and, and the run of games will be published in the next week or so 
OK, I think we're going to go over to Phil now, who has, uh, Parik McGoran has uh, an interview coming there with Dom Corrigan, the man himself, who has managed to steer Canali to another league final, second year in a row. So we're, we're getting this loaded up on the screen at the minute, Barson. Those, that, those league finals take place next weekend, more than likely going to be here, I think at 2 and 4 o'clock. At 2 o'clock it will be Devonish playing Rossley Shamrocks and at 4 o'clock Jerry Gonley will play against Kinale. And those are the two uh, division ones in the the two the two league finals, division one and two. And as we get Dom onto the screen, he's going to give his reaction to tonight's game. Thanks, Kier. Dom McCarry again. I'm sure a relieved man with a late late Sean McManus goal coming in the third minute of injury time to make another league final. Yes, it was a great contest, and we knew coming in here that there was only going to be a kick of the ball in it. Uh, we probably had the better in the first Coming half. Coming up now, just like the she had better team in the second half. But it, down the home straight, we uh, we showed our composure there. We kept working. We knew the chance would come, and thankfully the right man was on the end of it. And uh, Sean nailed it. But before that, we had missed a couple of chances. So we're just delighted to be back in another league final. And Derry only now the faces once again. Um, I suppose Derry only did win the league game, but. I suppose two weekend teams that day, but I'm sure you'll be in for a serious test next Sunday. Oh, it'll be a serious test. Derek Lee. I think I went through the league unbeaten and didn't hear about the result tonight against my crew. But uh, uh, no, no, they're going very well. But the league is about championship preparations, and irrespective of what way next Sunday goes, this is massive championship preparations for us, and we're delighted to be in the final. And just a touch, you lost last year's league final. I'm sure there'll be plenty of hunger there for next Sunday. Oh, there's always hunger when you get to the final. Uh, you know, the league beaters last year picked us at the post, so uh, we were going out to give a good account of ourselves. And uh, we know we'll have to improve, but you're, uh, it's two weeks out from the championship next Sunday, so it's massive preparation. Irrespective of how it goes, next week's game is going to stand to us come championship. The, one of the final words from the maestro himself, Dom Corrigan, the man who has brought Canali to another league final and indeed great to see him looking so well and a picture of health there on the screen after having some health problems over the last year and everyone involved and from energy uh, is delighted to see this man back because it definitely... Uh, makes it a better place when he's around. It, he does, and he's one of the characters of Fermanagh football, there's no doubt, and uh, I suppose everybody looks up to Dom and have done over the years. Um, and of course, he'll, he'll be playing next Sunday <laughs> down, as Dom does, and we know rightly that Dom will be going all out uh, when and, it comes and down so to... And so will you now. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the less said the better, <laughs> but anyway, we'll leave it at that. Look, uh, both league finals will be on next Sunday um, at 2 o'clock. We have Devnish and Roslay, and at 4 o'clock we will have Kenali and Derrigonley. I'm really looking forward to them. Both games will be brought to you live here on Fermanagh GA TV, and we look forward to bringing... Uh, multiple games throughout the championship so as we finish up here in a very dark Brewster Park from myself Morris McLaughlin and Niall Maguire good night